Hi there. In this video, I'm going to take a look at calculating the Enhanced Vegetation Index, or EVI, using Sentinel-2 satellite imagery in QGIS. So for this tutorial, I'm assuming that you've already downloaded the Sentinel-2 satellite imagery that you want to work with. So if you haven't done that yet, then please check out uh, my tutorial video that shows you how. Okay, so this is actually the third in a series of videos I've been making looking at vegetation indices. Um, and the EVI is actually particularly designed for looking at areas where we have very dense vegetation, um, dense foliage, high vegetation cover, and actually allowing us to distinguish some of the variations in those areas. So like many of our vegetation indices, it makes use of the near infrared band, which is band 8 in our Sentinel-2 imagery, and the red band, which is band 4 in our Sentinel-2 imagery, because of the high contrast that these two bands provide uh, between vegetated and non-vegetated areas. But the EVI also makes use of band 2, the blue band, um, and uses this band to help highlight some of those differences in, in highly vegetated areas. And it also is supposed to help account for some variations in um, soil reflectance and atmospheric reflectance as well. So let's calculate our enhanced vegetation index. So as always, we're going to go up to raster from raster calculator. And this is a slightly more complex formula than the other vegetation indices I've looked at so far, partly because of the inclusion of the blue band, um, but also because it has a number of other coefficients that we need to account for, as, that we need to include in the formula as well. So actually the first thing that we need to put in our formula is 2.5, and this is actually a gain factor. So essentially the results of our calculations are going to be multiplied by 2.5 um, just to expand the, the range of values slightly. So 2.5 times open brackets, and then the top line will be familiar from NDVI, band 8, our near infrared band, minus band 4, our red band. So we're simply looking at the difference between near infrared and red reflectance. But the bottom line is a bit more complex. So divided by open two sets of brackets, and then our near infrared band, band 8, plus, and where in NDVI this would just be our red band, and for our enhanced vegetation index, this is actually going to be 6 times our red band, band 4. And then this is where the blue band comes in, so then minus 7.5 times our blue band, band 2. And then we're going to close brackets, add 1, and then close the final set of brackets to complete our formula. So 2.5 times near infrared minus red, divided by near infrared plus 6 times red, minus 7.5 times blue, plus 1. So that's our formula for the enhanced vegetation index. So I'm just going to save this, call it EVI. June 18.tiff as I'm using the June 2018 image again and click OK to run. So as always this will take a minute so just be patient. Okay so when this first pops into our display um, it's not looking very positive, it's pretty grey and the reason for that is we seem to get some quite extreme outlying values so whenever you read about enhanced vegetation index, it usually says we should get a value between minus one and one. Um, but I think the reason for that is that they're assuming that your three bands have been normalized to have values themselves between zero and one. Um, and we're working directly with the, the Sentinel-2 imagery. So actually the values that we have for each of our bands, the near infrared band, for example, can reach well over 2000 um, in terms of its reflectance, whereas the red and blue bands are typically much lower down in the, the kind of low hundreds 
Um, and the result is we get much greater variations um, across the map. So what we need to do is actually change our display. So I'm going to change this to single band pseudo color and I've got a red green color ramp here. And after a bit of experimentation, I've discovered that mean plus or minus 0.25 standard deviations seems to highlight most of the areas pretty well. Um, and obviously those few extreme values just get shifted to red or green at the, the higher and, and lower ends. So let's zoom in on some areas here. So I have a an area of forest here, as we can see from OpenStreetMap. Um, and let's just compare it to the NDVI for the same area. So we can see that actually it is much less saturated within that forested area than the NDVI was. Um, you know, we can see some of the, the same features, but whereas NDVI is very much towards the, the kind of maximum values, here we have got great variation. So it does seem to be fulfilling its purpose, which is to provide us with greater sensitivity within those regions of, of very high canopy cover. So there you go. That's how we calculate um, the enhanced vegetation index using Sentinel-2 satellite imagery in QJS. I am planning to look at a few more vegetation indices um, and also put out some other new tutorials looking at different GIS topics fairly soon. So please do subscribe and check back if you want to keep up to date with those. Thanks a lot.